hello class so let's begin today with our chapter 6 from geography that is manufacturing industries okay so in this chapter we are going to cover the points related to the basic concepts in this chapter we will be about agro based industries consumer industries we will learn about heavy industries joint sector industries large sector industries manufacturing how manufacturing is done under that public sector and private sector industries small scale industries all this will be our basic concept in this chapter okay it's a little bit lengthy chapter but very easy to understand so we will start with manufacturing industry now a place where the primary good that means the raw materials they we get it from the primary sector from that it starts moving and it reaches the manufacturing industries where the raw materials are converted into finished products using machines and this type of industries are known as manufacturing industries Clear? When a primary good or when a raw material is converted into finished products using machines, we name those industries as manufacturing industry. That means the secondary sector. As we know, three sectors are there: primary sector, secondary sector, and tertiary sector. So this is the secondary sector, manufacturing industry. Now here some examples are given: clothes from cotton. Sugar from sugar cane, paper from wood, iron from iron ore, aluminium from bauxite. So these are some of the examples of manufacturing industries. You can see the picture. This is how a manufacturing industry look like. Lots and lots of machines. Work going on. Of course, pollution is also there. People working over there. So all these things are. Included totally becoming a manufacturing sector. Now we are going to learn about uses of manufacturing industry. Why do we need manufacturing industry? For example, if we are getting gold, or if we are getting iron, or if we are getting diamond from the extraction from the earth crust, can we use it directly? Can we just uh, put it in our uh, necklace pendant, or can we just put it in our hand? In our finger, no. It has to be turned into a finished product. Same with wheat. Same with rice. Same with different eatable substances. Same with electrical appliances. Like that, so many and so many. So, from wherever we are getting the raw materials, it is sent to the plant. It is sent to the secondary sector, where the use of manufacturing industry is being very much properly. So what are they? The economic strength of a country is measured from the development of manufacturing industry. Yes, of course, the development of a country depends upon the development of manufacturing industry. Then comes they reduce the dependence of people on agriculture and they provide jobs. Yes, agriculture also gives job employment is there, but We can't. Ten to fifteen people are not indulged into the agriculture farm together from one farm. There may be only need of three to four people of it. Then where will the remaining people be? They can find jobs in manufacturing industry. So manufacturing industry is also helping employment. Then comes export of manufactured goods and bringing foreign exchange. Yes. We can export the manufacturing goods which are manufactured in our country, and with the help of that, we can get foreign exchange. We can have a good export deal with other foreign country. So, manufacturing industry also helps in bringing foreign exchange. Now, what are the facts behind manufacturing industry? Industrial revolution in Europe led to the development of modern factories all over the world. Earlier industries were not there, right? Earlier industries were not there. People used to work there in agriculture and farms, and they had 
the small farm shops where they sell the milk or the agricultural production. Now, when the industries have started coming, there was a great industrial revolution which took place in Europe. And because of that, we got modern factories all over the world. We understood that okay, these machines or these industries is useful for the development of our country. So, like this way, was the industrial revolution turned into a revolution where manufacturing industries were brought all over the world. Smelting of iron was known to the Indians for several centuries. The iron pillar near Kutub Minar, the iron pillar near Kutub Minar at Delhi is rust free. There is an iron pillar near Kutub Minar at Delhi and it is a rust free iron pillar. Okay, that means that because of proper smelting of iron and all, the iron pillar is not getting any rust. Next is industrial revolution. You can see the picture from small small machine. How we have created big machines, and with the help of that, our development is happening properly. Smelting of iron ore in modern India began in 1830 in Tamil Nadu. First cotton textile mill was set up at Mumbai in 1854. First jute mill was established at Vishra near Kolkata in 1855. And industries experienced ups and downs during the First and Second World War and at the time of partition of India in 1947. These are some of the facts related to the industrial revolution. There was a first jute mill established what ups and downs the industries faced during the First and Second World War and also during the partition of India, where was the first cotton textile mill set up at Mumbai in 1854. So all these things are showing that how manufacturing industries are slowly and gradually developing. It started in Europe and it started developing all over the world. People started knowing the importance of manufacturing industries in their life and also in the economic development of a country. Next, factors that contribute to the location of industries. Now, yes, of course, when location of industries are set up, there are certain factors that are contributing to the location of industries. So some factors are mentioned here, physical factors, that is one is raw material. That means if we are having raw material near to us, that will be very good as an industrial location factor because transportation problem of raw material will not take place. Closeness to the source of bulky and perishable raw material, example, iron and steel industry and Sugar industry, that means they will always try to see that the raw material is very much near to the industry because it will help them for more development with less cost. So you can see the picture here. They will try to see that the industries or the things are near to them so that they can get the raw material easier and they can start working upon it. Next is power resources. Power resources means closeness to the source of economically viable power resources. For example, aluminum smelting requires a lot of electricity. That means they will try to see that there is proper power resources available nearby the industries so that if they need lots of electricity, then there is no problem of any or this is short cut or no problem of any type of this light has gone, it's not working. Then, with the, if the power resources are near to them, they can always make use of it. Okay, next. Water. Availability of water in abundance for processing of the raw material, example, jute and coir industry. When jute and coir industries are there, they need always water near them. Why? Because they have to clean it, they have to dry it. So they will always see that jute industry and quiet industries are near to the availability of water. 
you can see here the jute and quad near the water they clean it properly they dry it and then they use it as use it for other purposes now the other thing is climate it's okay favorable climate condition for processing of raw material example cotton textile industry requires more humidity therefore located in maharashtra they always go for climate because if climate is not appropriate then how can we use the raw material or how is we are going to get the raw material easily so for that they always need to look that there is a favorable climate condition so that the processing of raw material takes place properly and the development of industry also along with that takes place in a good manner next comes human factors labor cheap and skilled labor example diamond cutting industries in sure as we are having machines and lots and lots of machines for working but still there are some industries where more labor are needed so they try to see that there are cheap and skilled labor available so the diamond cutting industries and all that they will not keep at a long remote area they will keep it little bit near to residential areas and all so that the people can easily come there transportation is available for them and they get job and as well as they get the labels next is transport any industry needs a well developed transport network for the movement of raw materials and finished goods that means they try to see that the raw material and finished goods are not far away from the market or from the resource place because if it take a long time to travel then it may get delay with any kind of development so always the industries try to see that the raw material availability and the finished goods market are near to them so that they don't face any type of lag in transportation railways are there roadways are there airways are there waterways are there these are some of the types of transportation facility which is available to us next is capital yes every industry needs capital investment which is available to banks that means whenever we are starting any business we need capital for it we need the starting amount for it whether it is a small shop or a big shop or what so for that the banks which is available to the bank they will also see to it that banks are near by the industries and these are some of the factors which are helping us to understand the location of the industry their capital is also taken into consideration next human factor is market demand and supply play an important role in the economy of the country demand from the market is met by the supply from the industry so market also plays an important role in deciding or in contributing the location of industry because demand and supply play keeps on moving as i told earlier the place from the raw materials are reached and the market where we have to sell the things to the industries will always see to it that they are near by these places so that the demand and supply that does not get any type of lag back next is government policies government policies are made to regulate the setting by and functioning of industries here also if i want to start a factory where lots and lots of chemicals and all type of mining is going to happen government will not allow me to start it in the middle of any residential area i need an isolated place for that so government policies also regulate and function in knowing which industries it is how much acres of land they need what is the pollution going to come out from there what is their actual purpose and where they should be situated in here also government policies plays an important role and if they feel that no this place is not apt for this industry government will not give us permission to start an industry over there so this government policy also is a main factor in knowing and contributing to the location of industries 
See, this is a, a small Ministry of Petroleum Resources. It's a small uh, government policy paper given here for an example, as an example to you. Now from classification of industries, which are the different classification of industries and how are they classified? What are the facts and points under this? This we will learn from the next chapter, next session. Okay, thank you.